Hello and welcome to a Mia Culpa video uh, on the channel uh, this morning. Uh, I'm on my laptop um, and uh, it's the only way I can basically record anything today. And I felt I needed to record something to say sorry to Celery um, for missing some very uh, important logic during the solve of yesterday's puzzle, which was Coordi Loop. Um, frankly, one of the the finest Sudoku puzzles that I've ever seen in my life and I got very excited during various points of the solve um, so much so that at a, at a sort of crucial juncture I missed a possibility um, which I've sort of uh, I've sort of reached the point at which I, I failed to spot something on the screen now and I'm going to try and explain to you how um, how I could put that right, the, lo the logic that Celery baked into the puzzle, and it was, it's really cute logic as well, so I'm even more disappointed in myself. Um, but these things happen, we solve these puzzles live, and we don't always spot everything. Um, now sometimes if it's, a, if it's a minor slip, I let the comments do the talking. Um, I mean actually, to be honest, I don't think we make that many, that many real errors. Um, but, uh, but but dozens of you were asking questions yesterday about how did he how did he rule this out? Well, the fact is I didn't rule it out because I didn't see it. Um, so I got so excited when I could see that um, the coordinates. If we try and put nine on the loop, just a reminder: you try and put nine uh, uh, that that onto the onto the loop. You have to. It, it ends up being on one of these diagonal squares. So row one, column eight, row two, column seven, row three, column six, etc., etc. But because because we know at this point that six is on the loop in one of these positions because of this beautiful six cage, we know because the whisper line will alternate polarity. We know all high digits that we put on the loop. Are going to have that are coordinated. Well, no, all high digits, but frankly, are all are all going to be in white squares. So we can instantly rule out a nine here, a seven on this diagonal. Five is impossible to put on a whispers line anyway. So these three are all ruled out. Now six, we're told the only coordinate or the only cage in the puzzle that sums to six is this one, and we've found that one already. That's what's giving us these two. So six is fine. Um, uh, what have I missed out now? Eight. Eight is possible, and I wrongly assumed the only possibility. Um, let's keep going through this. This one is wrong because the, because the loop flicks round. I mean, if, if we try and put row one, column three in here, so to clue this cell onto the loop, we'd be putting a four in there, but four and six are of different polarity. Um, so the checkerboard log logic scuppers this one. So again, we can get rid of this diagonal. What about this one? Now somehow in my brain yesterday, you saw me say, well, two, you can't put double one into, into a thing. But double one um, is, is the coordinates for double one are there. Um, and that's, that's rulable. Well, it's ruled out for many reasons. You can't put double one into a Sudoku cage, for example. Uh, also, it would have the wrong polarity. But what about, and many of you asked this question, what about a one and a two, or a two and a one, summing to three? Now, that would put a three in one of those two squares. And what's wrong with that? Three would have the correct polarity versus six. It's in a different color. The three is low, the six is high. So at first blush, well, even at second blush, this seems completely legitimate. So, so I'm going to try and just take you through how to extend the logic from here. So at this point, what I should have said is, OK, it's still magnificent. We've now reduced the possible coordinates in any of these cages to either being uh, pointing at a three on this diagonal or pointing at an eight on this diagonal. One of those things must be true. And then I think that, the, that there are a variety of ways you could go from here. But let, let's deal with firstly, is it possible to clue a three in one of these squares using one of these cages? And the reason I think that this is interesting is that we want to try, if we can, to pinpoint which of these sixes is possible. Now, the way I did it in the video yesterday was I said, well, okay, this, this, 
this cannot possibly be a one that's connected to this six on the loop because this would have to be a seven uh, to, to, clue, to clue the eight diagonal and row seven column one we know is not an eight. Well, that logic's incomplete now, isn't it? Because, well, for example, you could have two one here cluing a three into one of those and that wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't immediately be obvious why it breaks. But let me explain why it does break. If either of these cages is a one, two pair, it's cluing a three into one of these squares. And now I'm going to ask the question, how do you fill the other cage? We know the other cage is either point is either a one, two pair. Well, it's clearly not a one, two pair pointing at a three in one of these squares. That's one option, but it's clearly wrong. Or it's cluing, a, it's cluing an eight along this diagonal, which means it has to be seven, one, a two, six or a three, five, double four won't work. Um, so it's going to need, you're going to need a one, two or a three to, if you wanted to clue row six, column two, for example, you're going to need a two in there. You can't get one, two and three into the other cage. So that doesn't work. And that, that doesn't take us as far as we need to go. Uh, sorry, let me re restore that one, that one corner mark now. But it does take us somewhere because once we've worked out that neither of these cages can be a one, two cage, we can now apply the logic that I did in the video yesterday to say, ah, well, this is impossible to be the six clued by this, because if this was the six clued by this, this will be a one. This cage needs to be a seven one cage pointing at this, and that's not an eight. So we can take that option off the table, restore some of the logic that I included yesterday when we get to this position here with a six one pair, which we must join up, of course, with our loop. So let's do that. By the way, I hope that the sound on this video isn't dreadful. Um, and um, OK, and we reach this position, do we? I think we do. And we, know, we actually know, I suppose, at this point as well, because we worked out that neither of these cages could be a 1-2 pair from the logic I just did, that that must be a 7. Though 1 column 7 is going to have to be an 8, and this 8 is on the loop. Um, now... OK, OK, and now I can now I can rule rule out any of these cages being a one, two pair. Let me show you how. Let's imagine this one was. It doesn't matter which way around it is, whether it's one, two or two, one. But let's imagine some other cage other than these two in this puzzle has the co has a coordinate pointing to a three on this diagonal. Why does this fail? This is the big question in town. Well, I think the way I would answer this is I would say, OK, the three that's in one of these two positions, how is it going to, what are its neighbours from a German whispers perspective? Now, three is a bigamous digit. It only has two, two natural partners, eight and nine. So we know that somehow or other, whether it's this three or this three, we have to connect them to an eight, nine pair in this box that are on the loop. Now, that's interesting because... Um, we know, we actually, if we think about this, 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 this cage combination here, because we know this cage is pointing along at, at a digit that's along this eight diagonal, this can't have an eight or a nine in it. That's not going to work. So the eight, nine pair actually that are on the loop have to be in those five cells. Well, where's the eight going? Bearing in mind its polarity, the eight's going to have to go here, isn't it? So this is an eight and it's on the loop. And one of these is a three and is also going to be connected to the nine. Well, now we have, now we have a very interesting question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, no, it is interesting to me um, because how are we going to move the, how are we going to connect the one and the eight on the loop? Is it possible that we take some sort of circuitous route or do we have to go directly? Well, that's quite, quite, I, I find that really cool because if you don't go directly, it's impossible not to make a two by two. If you go up and across and down, you've made a two by two. If you go down um, and somehow out here and then down in here, you're going to have a two by two when you exit. So it's just not possible to not go directly like that to the eight. 
And now you now you've got exactly the same issue though, because now somehow we need to go we need to choose which of these is a three and we need to put a nine next to it and yet we need to not create a two by two and I don't think it's very difficult to see that's just not it's impossible if this is the three if we put the nine here or here however we move through the three we're going to have a two by two if we put the three here then we know this can't be a nine because it's in a cage so that's going to be the nine that has to be on the loop um, and again we're going to create a two by two it so it just doesn't work isn't that pretty so and that would have allowed me to, to to then say aha well now I can see that it's actually legitimate to rule three out from either of these squares therefore every cage in the puzzle does point to this diagonal and we can move forward. Of course, it would have helped if I'd also put this cage in <laughs> correctly, which I think I managed to put the four here and the two here yesterday, whereas actually this six is in row two, column four, and that didn't help me either. So it was um, a bit of a dog's breakfast of a solve. Uh, and for that, I really I will apologize most of all to Celery for not showcasing their puzzle in the manner I would have I'd liked to. I hope some of the joy that I got from the logic I did find came through in the video, though, because it, it was an absolutely mesmerizing, a mesmerizing piece of work. And sorry, obviously, to all the all of the viewers out there who were like, what's he doing? This is nonsense. Well, it was a bit nonsense. Um, it was incomplete. There was a big lacuna. And for that, I'm sorry. Okay. Anyway, we'll be back later, of course, with more videos, hopefully without lacunas in logic. And um, bye for now.